Now in this video, we're going to continue with what we introduced in the last video. We're going to use gauss jordan elimination, and what I want to do is come up with a way of doing it that's more tractable, right? easier to do by hand. We're carrying a lot of baggage around here that's making this very inefficient and really keeping us uh, from seeing the key features. So I'm going to introduce basically a shorthand notation here. Um, that helps. Now, I'm not a big fan generally of putting effort in the shorthand notation. Like for other issues, it takes you, you spend more time learning the gimmicks than it's worth. But in this case, it'll really help you solve these problems quickly and more efficiently. And that's the idea. So here was a system, the problem we looked at the last time. Okay, this is the same problem we ended we did last time. Now notice we're going to use Gauss Jordan elimination, right? Now, what we can do, I'm, this is what you're allowed to do, right? The idea is you want to change the system of equations, but not change the solutions. So you're only allowed to do three things. You can swap the order of the equations. You can multiply one equation by a non-zero constant, right? You can't, if you multiply by zero, obviously. So you can multiply by a constant, swap the order of equations, and you can add one equation to another. Okay, that's what you're only allowed. Those are the only things you do. And if you follow that, the solution set never changes. The solution set never changes. So those are the three things we can do. Okay, so we're going to see how they play out now. So that, that's what Gauss-Jordan is. Those are the rules of the game. And then there's the algorithm. So here we are. Now the idea here is, the idea here is, see, we know the x, y, and z are there. They're fading away. They're fading away. They're just baggage. They're just baggage. All I want is the data. That's the data. That's what we're going to do. I don't want to carry around the X, Y, and Z every single step of this process. It slows you down. Now, in the beginning, you may not be as comfortable with this idea, and that's why I had the last, the last video. Um, but it just slows us down, right? So what I want to do is I want to represent the system of equations in this neat, clean form. And you can see how I, how I do it. It's, it's very nice and clean. The X, Y, and Z just get in the way of, of my decision making. There's a very methodical way of going about this. So we're going to work now with the, the version on the right. But understand, you can always go between the two because there's always an X, Y, Z there. Okay, so make sure you're comfortable with that, right? So let's go back and see. This is what we had, right? We had the x, y, and z here, right? And then I know they're there. I know they're there. I just don't need to really write them. I know they're there, and I'm just going to keep the data. And you can say, well, I could keep the equal sign, but, well, we put a little line there. Okay, so this is what I want to do. So when we're going to solve this now, I'm going to start out by just taking my system of equations and representing it in this nice, clean form. Right? That's what I want to do. Now, what Gauss tells me to do is I need to get a 1 up in this slot right here. That's what I want. That's, that's the Gauss process. Get a 1 there. Okay? So I have a 4 there. Right? I want a 1 there. So... What I'm allowed to do, these are the rules of the game, right? I can swap equations, multiply an equation by a constant, and add one equation to another. Okay? Now, we're usually going to work, if the one is here, this is what I want. The one is the key. It's called the pivot. If I want, if, if I want to get a one, I'm going to work up and down, up and down, up and down. I'm not even going to bother looking at anything else. Just look up and down over here. Just look up and down. And I want a 1. Do you see? That's why this is efficient. Ignore everything else. Just up and down in this right here. And you see a 1? Hmm. Hmm. Right? See a 1? There's a 1. And I can swap the orders. Right? Again, we'll work out problems. So you'll you know, hopefully you'll get the hang if you work with me here. We swap. So again, you, you're going to make algebra mistakes. I always make mistakes. But I don't panic because... You can check your answer at the end. If you made a mistake or if you start getting crazy fractions, you keep track of what you're doing. I, the key is not that you're not going to make mistakes. You don't want to start from the beginning every single time. 
So I'm basically going to keep track of all my steps. Now most people use a notation similar to this. If people have difference, you can use different, but it works fine. All this notation says is I'm swapping the first equation with the third equation. And again, I want to keep track because if I make a mistake, I don't want to have to rethink it through. I just want to go find the mistake and drive on. Okay, so I'm just keeping track of what I'm doing. Swap the first and third equations. And that's all I did. Notice the first, first equation goes to the bottom, right? This is the next iteration, right? I want to keep track of everything I'm doing. Again, if I made a mistake, I can easily find it and then correct it. And I'm swapping the third equation becomes the first equation. Okay, that's what I did. And I have a one there. And again, it wasn't really any work. Check. Now, once you have that one there, that one should never change to a different no number. You made a mistake. If that one ever changes, you're wrong. Okay, so it's locked in. Now we turn the crank, we turn the machine. Now I have the one here. Gauss tells me to get a zero here. Right? I had the one there, and then you're gonna wipe out everything below the one. Well, I'll come up with the algorithm later. I'll show you specifically, but just work with me. One there, and I wipe out what's below it. That's that three. I want that three to become a zero. Now again, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? These are, these are what I can do. This is the Gauss-Jordan step, right? These are the rules. I'm gonna work up and down, up and down, up and down, right? I'm gonna work up and down. So I'm gonna work up and down. Now you see, I wanna get rid of that three. Notice the one, you're always gonna key in. Once you get a one, you, you're always gonna key in on that one. And that's why, you see, I ignore everything else, everything else. All I care about is that one and the three. That's it, I ignore everything else. So what do you need to multiply the one by so you can add it to three to get zero? I mean, it's pretty obvious. You, see, you'll get this, you can get this really quickly. Again, there's, there's one, there's a couple little, well, one little gimmick I have to show you shortcut and then you'll be fine. But what do I multiply by? Right, I want to multiply the one, add it to the three and get a zero. It's pretty easy, right? I mean, once you start focusing your attention, you, you can get it. I'm not saying there's not a lot of crushing algebra, but you, you know, you can get it. So minus three times the one, and this is the equation version of that, and this is what we're gonna record. This is how you get it. Notice the minus three goes in the slot there. So this says, then I'm going to multiply the first equation by a minus three. It's always this, the, the, it's always going to have the same template. So you're always looking for the same thing because those are the rules on the right over there. So it's going to be minus three times E1, the first equation, right? Minus three times E1. It's always going to have this form. Multiply an equation by a non-zero constant, do you see? And then add it to the second equation. That's what that notation means. Minus three times the first equation plus the second equation. And we're always going to do this. And notice the arrow pointing to the left says we're going to replace the second equation with minus three times the first equation plus the second equation. And notice we're allowed to add one equation to another. So this is legitimate. So we're going to take minus three times the first equation. And we represent that here. So notice it's minus three times the one is minus three, minus three times the minus two is six, minus three times the three is minus nine, and minus three times 11 is minus 33. Now again, it's easy to make an algebra mistake, but don't panic about it. If you start getting any insane numbers or fractions, yes, look and check. But we're gonna keep track of our work, so if we do see stuff going off the rails, we can come back and just check our work without having to redo the problem again. And now I'm going to bring my second equation. I want to add this to the second equation. Again, you only focus on certain features of the problem, right? So I'm going to add the second equation. So I'm just going to bring it over here. You see, very efficient. First one, that's minus three times the first equation. I'm going to add it to the second equation. Right? Add them together. And this is what I get.
Now notice it's minus 3, 3, 0. See, I don't need any distractions of x, y, and z. Just, just 6, 3 is 9, minus 9, minus 1, 10, and minus 29. Very efficient. And make sure you got the 0 there. That's what you originally wanted. So here it is. That's minus 3 times the first equation plus the second equation. And now I'm going to just substitute it in for the second equation. Right, so I'm basically taking minus 3 times the first equation and adding it to the second equation. And that's what I did on the right. Now I'm going to just push it back into the, into the original, into the problem. And again, I want to do it in another step so I keep track of my work. And again, this isn't a definitive form. That'll be in the, in, in the next section, but th this is pretty close. Okay, now I just want to again highlight the features. This isn't all the bookkeeping quite yet. Okay. So there's my work. I substitute, I replace the second equation by minus 3 times the first equation plus the second equation, and that's it. Notice I have the 1, and I have the 0. And the 1 never changes, and that 0 will never change. Keep checking that, because when you're starting to practice problems, you're going to make mistakes, and you're going to see they're going to change. Well, hopefully not. Now we crank the wheel again. Every time we, we do the Gauss-Jordan process, the system gets easier. Right? So I have the 1 there. I have the 0 there. Now I want to get another 0. And if I had more than 3 equations, i just keep going. You just keep wiping out all the zeros as you go south here until they're all gone. Okay, so I need a 0 here for the 4. Again. How am I going to do it? These are the my possible steps. This is what I'm allowed to do. Only focus your attention here. Ignore the rest of the problem. Focus only up and down. That's the key. So I'm looking at the 1 and the 4. So what do I multiply the 1 by? Add it to 4 to get to 0. I, I mean, look. I mean, you can do this quickly. Right? So I'm going to multiply the 1 add it to 4, and I want to get this 0 here. Right? So what do you see? You can see it's just the minus 4, right? And that's the equation form which I want to keep track of. Okay, so this says take minus 4 times the first equation, right? multiply an equation by non-zero constant, that's legitimate, and then I'm going to add it to the third equation. So I can add one equation to another. So minus 4 times the first equation. I'm just going to do that over here. Notice minus 4 times 1 is minus 4. Minus 4 times minus 2 is 8. Minus 4 times 3 is minus 12. And minus 4 times 11 is minus 4. 4. It's very easy to make an algebra mistake. Again, no matter how careful you are. So you want to keep track of your work. Okay, and then we're going to add the third equation. Right, here's the third equation. Add the third equation. So I'm going to bring that over here. Right, and we're going to add them together. Just add them together. Here's the first. Here's minus four times the first. That's the third one. We're going to add them together and get this. Right. So minus four plus four is zero. Eight plus two is ten. Minus twelve minus is plus minus three is minus fifteen, and then minus forty over here. So that's it. That's minus 4 times the first equation plus the third equation. And then I'm going to have to substitute it back in to replace, right? Because we did the work on the right, I have to substitute it back in. So I'm going to just push it back in this place. Now, I have to do a new slide, so if, if you're following that, the top one is just a repeat of what I see. The bottom one here, right? The bottom one here is just the top one up here. I just don't have enough space. Okay, and you'll see what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace the last equation with minus 4 times the first equation plus the third equation. Bam! Okay, so notice I have the 1, I have the 0, and I have the 0, and they'll never change. That 1, 0, 0 will never change. And if I had a fourth equation, I'd get a 0 there too. Now we're going to crank the machine again. Crank the machine again, I have 1, 0, 0. Again, if I had more equations, I'd just keep going 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So what does Gauss say next? So you have the 1, 0, 0. Now Gauss says once you have the 1, 0, 0, 
go down, go diagonal. All right, go from here to here and get a one. So that's what I want. I'll show you the, the big the picture of this algorithm later, but we want a one there. Okay. Now again, we have the one here, so we're just going to focus. That nine needs to become a one, and we're just going to focus up and down. Just focus up and down. So that nine needs to become a one, and we're just going to focus up and down. So see if you can find a way of, of, of doing that. Now, of course, you could divide everything by nine, but we don't want the fractions. This is what we're allowed to do. So again, I'm only focusing my attention here only focusing here. Don't bother with the rest. Now, this is the kind of common mistake people make. And again, this is why I put the precautions in. Suppose you just multiplied the first equation by four and added it, right? That would give you minus eight plus nine would be one. But look what would happen here. You'd mess up this. And then when you added them together, that zero would change into a minus four. So you see, you know, that's not the correct step. Right? Once it's a zero, it always stays a zero. So if you if you multiply the first equation, I'm sorry, I said minus four. If you multiply the first equation by four, right, and add the first equation to the second equation, yes, you'd get nine minus eight is one. But notice that zero would turn into a four, and that's a red flag. You can't let that happen. You can't. So that minus two is out. You can't use it. So notice you're only focusing here now on the ten and the nine. Usually, when you're going to the bottom, you're focusing below. So again, any, any connection, you can see that there's clearly going to be a connection between 10 and 9. It gives you the 1. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'll multiply the second equation by minus 1. Right? That gives me a minus 9. Right? And then I can just add the 10 to it. Do you see? I can just add the 10 to it. Now you can often combine these in one shorter step, but my feeling is show your work. The key is not to get the answer in the least amount of steps. That's, I think, a mistake a lot of people make. The key is to get the answer in the least amount of time. You're going to make algebra mistakes. The clearer you can show your work, the easier it is to figure out where the algebra mistake is. You're always going to make an algebra mistake. I'll just caution you. I mean, I never get a problem the first time. But because I write my stuff out cleanly, I can easily find the mistake and just correct it going forward. Okay, so all I did was that. Now you see it becomes a little more transparent now what we need to do, right? So I can just add the third equation to the second equation. See, I'm focusing my attention up and down. I don't even bother paying attention to those other numbers. Just here, I'm focusing all my attention right here. So I'm adding one to another, so let's just do it. I'm going to take my second equation, right? And I'm gonna replace it by the third equation plus the second equation. It's always that same template. So here's my second equation over here. Here's my third equation, and I'm going to add them together. So notice, I'm going to then come back and substitute that up here. Notice I'm going a little quicker now because otherwise we'll be here for the rest of the month. All right now I'm going to substitute that in and I do it below. So I'm just replacing the second equation right by the third equation added to the second equation. And notice I have the one zero zero that didn't change. You always want to check that because it's very easy to mess that up. And I have a one there, so that's good. Let's turn the crank again, right? Now what Gauss wants us to do, I'm just bringing that up, right? So again, I'm running out of space. So this one here that I'm pointing to is the same as this, it's the same. So we got the one zero zero, we have a one. Now we sweep down below this one. And if there were more equations, we just keep sweeping below. We're cleaning everything out underneath. So I want this 10 to become a zero, right? Again, focus your attention up and down, up and down. That one is always the key. Once you get that one, you want to use it. Okay, so if you can figure out the next step, write it down, right? Pause and try writing it down. 
And this is the template. This is the template we're always going to use. So again, you can see as the problem goes on in developing the different features. Uh, my target is this 10. It's in the third equation. So the 10 is called the target. Okay? And so it appears here. If that's where I'm targeting, in the format, it appears here and here. Okay? So I know I'm targeting the 10. It's in the third equation. So that goes here automatically. The second equation is where the 1 is. And so I need a constant times the 1 plus 10 to give me a 0 there. So what do I need there? A minus. So the number times the second equation. Right? Just look. Just focus on those two. Minus 10, right? If you look at it correctly and you're looking at it the right way, you can be pretty efficient with this. You really can. So here's my second equation. And here's 10 times the second equation, right? Minus 10 times the second equation. Here's my third equation. Just add them together. Bam, right? Just add them together and you get this. Now we're going to substitute this back. Now again, if you need to pause the video, check it out by all means. Of course, in the class, I would be taking much longer to do this. I'm going to substitute that in. And there's, there's my step. I replaced the third equation by my new third equation. And again, if you start getting crazy fractions, and I think I did when I was work typing it in, you know you made a mistake. I mean, I think originally I added it and didn't get 70. I think I got 60 or something, whatever. Well, that's a typo. The first equation should be uh, 110, right? It's not 11. It's 110. It should be 110, right? So it should be 1 minus 2, 3, 110. And that's it. So I have the 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Now we're going to turn the crank. Now that's a, the, the first equation should be 110 up at the top, right? So I have the 1, 0, 0, the 1, 0. And now I need a 1. Notice what I'm doing, the pattern. The 35 has to become a 1. So how do I go about that? Right? Can you write down the format? I'm just going to take the third equation and you're going to multiply by a constant 1 over 35 times the third equation. And that comes down here. So it should be a 1. Crank the machine. Notice you see how everything is getting clean. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. So what we do, the pattern is, we sweep around the bottom. See, we sweep around the bottom. And then we're going to sweep around the top after the bottom's cleaned out. So we sweep around the bottom. And then we sweep around the top. So the next thing I do is I'm going to go up on this side. So I'm going to get, replace that 5, minus 5. I want to turn it into a 0. And what's the template? Minus 2, right, it's the second, I mean, I'm sorry, it's the second equation. I'm targeting the second equation, right? Minus 5 is my target. I'm targeting the second equation, so it goes here and here. Again, you don't even have to think about this. You will see that it's very mechanical how you do this. My pivot, what I'm trying to use is the third, is the one in the third equation. So what do I multiply the third equation by to knock out that minus 5? And a 5. It's very efficient if you're looking at the right things. So, okay, multiply that by, just bring that over, multiply the third equation there by a 5, add them together, and we have this. So I'm going to replace my second equation by this. Okay, now again, the top one should be 11, it should be 110, that's a type, I'll have to come back or what. Maybe it is 11 then. Maybe it's not a typo. I thought it was. Anyway, all right. Now we're going to crank the wheel. I guess it should be 11, right? We're going to crank it again. Notice I have a 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And now I'm working up the top 0. Now what Gauss tells us to do is sweep out the top. i got to get a 0 there. i got to get a 0 there. That 3 has to become a 0. So that's my target, right? That's my target. 
I'm just repeating that, right? This is all the same. I'm just repeating the last one up here. And I'm going to use that one, the pivot, to get that three. So I'm replacing, the target is the third is the first equation, I'm sorry. I'm targeting the first equation, so it goes here and here. I need to use my third equation. So what do I multiply the third equation by? So you can start seeing, you can be very efficient with this, minus three. So I just have all that work over here. Again, if you want to check, just pause and take a look. And then I'm going to substitute this back for the first equation. And you can see it looks good. And we're going to go on to the next step. Okay, I have the minus 2. I'm targeting the minus 2. I'm going to use the 1 below it. So that's my steps. Here's my work. Again, try it. I get this, I put it in, and that's it. That's it. Notice all that's left is one, the one's in the middle, and then the zero's top and bottom. So we started out with our original system of equations. We turned it into this, this, this simple form. We did Gauss-Jordan, and it turned into this. Now we can convert this back to a system of equations. That's what that says. That says 1x plus 0y plus 0z equals 3. Right? That's, that's how it works. 0y, 0z equals 3, which is just x equals 3. Right? I mean, you know the answer there. If you substitute a 3 in for the x, 3 equals 3. This one is going to be 0x, 0x, 1y, 0z equals minus 1 which is y equals minus 1. And the bottom one, just going to, you know, 0x zero, zero plus 0y, zero 1z equals 2, so z equals 2. Now that, that, I can guess the answer. x is 3, y is minus 1, z is 2. Put those back in here, and you should always check your work. Because you're, you're going to always make a mistake the first time. Right? Hmm. Light bulb, I know the answer. X is 3, Y is minus 1, Z is 2. I know the answer to this bottom one. So we'll plug those back up in here, plug those back up into here, and check. Okay, now I'm not going to because it's tedious and we did it in the previous video. But if you check, you get the first equation will be 4 equals 4, the second one will be 4 equals 4, and the third one will be 11 uh, equals 11. Okay, so next we're going to look at some special cases. Okay, originally when we, we did it in the uh, two equations and two unknowns, two linear equations, we said there were three, three cases, and that's what I wanted you to remember. There's a case where you can have one and only one solution, and that's what we just did. You can have infinitely many solutions, right? Remember what that was when the lines were the same line, and you can have no solution, so the two lines were parallel. Now that holds in any number of equations for any number of unknowns, right? So 10 equations, 10 unknowns, a billion equations, a billion unknowns, three equations, and three unknowns. So let's see how that manifests its way if we're doing Gauss-Jordan elimination. So here's a problem. Here's a, here's a different problem. And we're going to do Gauss-Jordan elimination and see what happens here. So see, first things first, see if you can write this down in the, in the special form. Right? See if you can write this down in the special form. So pause and give it a try. Okay, that's it. Okay. Now, see if you can do get the 1, 0, 0. See if you can do that. So pause the video and try to work this out with me. Try to get a 1, 0, 0 on the left. Okay, and then I'll, I'll I mean, and then I'll do it. This is what we do in the class. So I need a 1 here, right? Don't, you ignore everything else, everything else. That's why it's grayed out. You focus only on the 1 and I have a 1, so check. 
Next thing I need is the three. I need to turn that three into a one. And, you're, and, and when you're sweeping the bottom, you always use the one above it. So always use that one above, that's your key. When you're sweeping below, you use the one above. You're always gonna use the one on, on that middle there. So what's, what's write down the steps? Write the, can you write down the step here? Pause and write down the step. I need a zero there, okay, I need a zero there. So this is the general template. This is the general template, don't, don't be, what I'm saying is that three is the target. So you see that I'm gonna replace the second equation by something added to the first equation plus the second equation. That's my target, so that tells me E2, second equation. And E1 is where my pivot is, that one is my pivot. So you see, the format just follows, it just follows. And all I have to do is figure out the number that goes in here, minus three. Okay, very efficient, very efficient. So minus three times the first equation, just put that over here. And again, show your work here because you're going to make algebra mistakes so you can fix it easily. Now I wanna add the second equation, so I'm gonna push that over here, right? Add them together, add them together, and that's what I get. Okay, again, you can pause to check the work. Now I'm gonna replace that Shove that into the second equation. Bam. Okay, so it goes down there. Okay, again, notice how the high, the dark parts. Only focus on what you need. The rest of the material is irrelevant. Just rewrite it without paying attention to it. You're only focusing on certain features of the problem. Okay, so what do you want to do next? Try to write down and do the next step without my prompting. That one I want to get rid of in the bottom, and I want to use that one in the top. So the one in the bottom in the third equation is my target, right? And the one at the top is my pivot. So I want that to become a zero, right? So here's my general format. So that's my target. So I'm replacing the third equation, right? So it goes there. I'm replacing the third equation, and then on the right, I'm using my one as my pivot. Right? So what do I need to multiply the one by to get rid of the minus one? Notice it's always the same template. Just look for it, do it quickly and drive on. Don't waste time looking at other things. We're not trying to sightsee. We're trying to knock this out quickly and efficiently. So minus one times the first added to the third. Right? So minus one times the first. Just do it quickly. Just look at the first. Minus one, minus one, minus one, minus seven. Don't waste time. Just put your third one over. Again, don't pay attention to anything else. Just reproduce it, push it right over there. Add them together, right, add them together. Again, it's set up efficiently. Just do it quickly, don't waste time, add them together. And then replace the third one. There it is. Notice I keep my work there on the right. I keep my work. So if it comes out that something gets crazy fractions or I check at the end and it doesn't work, uh, I have my work there. I can easily find my algebra mistake and fix it and just continue on. Okay, so that's what I have now. Now, do you remember what we do next? If you do, try it. Okay, now here's where I'm going to short circuit it. There's something that's happening here. Now, this is where we're deviating from Gauss, and you can see why maybe. See, I have a minus five here. That's what I'm targeting. But notice these are the same. Do you remember when we did two equation and two unknowns, what's happening here? Can you see what's gonna happen here? What if I add the second and third equations together? Let's just replace the third equation with, so I'm adding the second and third equations together. Everything drops out. Okay, so I'm pushing this over so we can see, right? This is the same, I just copied the same material over here. So the third equation is all zeros. So it sets up an equation where I have, right, 0x, zero 0y zero plus 0z zero equals 0. 0 equals 0. Do you remember what that meant when we had 0 equals 0? It's a true statement. It's true. 
It just says I don't really have three equations. I really only have two. This is the case where the two lines are the same line. They're the same line. I have infinitely many solutions. That's what we got out of that lecture on two equations and two unknowns. So in the previous example, we had one and only one solution. In this case, we get zero equals zero, which is true. And what it says is that we have infinitely many solutions. Okay? Infinitely many. So I shortcut it a little bit. I didn't get a one. I could have gotten a one instead of a minus five. But you can see if you just add them together, the third one drops out, I get zero equals zero. Okay, now let's look at this one. Again, write it as a matrix equation. Right, I mean, I'm sorry, write it as a, in, the, in the shortened form. That, that's later we're going to do that. But anyhow, shortened form. And try to get the 1, 0, 0. Okay, let me jump in. Here's the shortened form, right? Here's the shortened, here's the data. I have the 1 there, so I'm good to go there. Now I need to get a 1 where the 3 is. The 3 is my target, and I'm going to use the 1. Now you could say, could I use the 1 in the third equation? You could, but you have to get a 1 in the top. So you know there's always going to be a 1 there. So unless you know the third equation is better, who cares? Use the 1. So I have a 1 is my pivot in the first one. I, the second equation, 3, is my target. So if you didn't, pause and write down the step. Okay, it should be automatic. So the 3 needs to turn into a 0. So here's my template. 3 is my target. So I'm going to replace the second equation so it goes in the first and third slot. Again, don't waste time. If you know what you're looking for, focus. Focus and do these things quickly and efficiently. Now, again, the first time you solve these problems, it's not going to be efficient. But we're going to do this in, well, in class we would do it a few days. You, you'll be efficient. Notice my pivot is the first equation. That always goes here. What do I need to multiply the 1 by in order to get the, to knock out the 3? Minus 3, right? So just do it quickly. Minus 3 times the first equation, there, plus the second equation. Just bring that over. Add them together, there, and then I'm going to replace the second equation. That's what the notation means. There. Again, I want to keep the steps going in case I make an algebra mistake, right? I'll check. Okay, now you look at this. Okay, see if you can if see if you can do the next step of the process. Okay. So I my target is the third equation, that one in the third equation. And I'm going to use my one in the top, that's my pivot. And I want that 1 in the bottom equation to turn into a 0. Here's my template. Again, automatically I know what I'm looking for. Third equation is my target. I'm using the second, I mean the first equation is my pivot. What do I need to put in there? Minus 1. Notice it's always exactly the same format. Don't waste time. You can do these things. You'll, you'll be very efficient. I mean a couple of minutes. So minus 1 times the first equation is here, right? I just multiplied minus 1. Bring my third equation over here. Right? That's my third equation. We'll add them together. Get this. Right? And now I have to replace my third equation. So I'm just going to shove that in there. Slot that right in there. Now look at this. What do you see happening? Very similar to the last case, right? I have minus 5, minus 7, and 5 and 7. Well, let's just shortcut this and knock it out. Now, I could do Gauss and get a 1 there, and it'll come out the same thing. But if we just add these together, I just add these together, replace the third one with the second plus the third, look what I get. 0, 0, 0, 0x, zero, 0y, zero, 0, 0z equals 1. Replace that down there. I don't. I ran out of space, so I just shifted everything to the right. Okay. So the last equation says 0x, zero 0y zero plus 0z equals 1, 0 equals 1. Do you remember? That meant no solutions. It's a contradiction. It can't happen. It's a contradiction. It contradicts the fact that when we do this, the algebra, the assumption is 
we have a solution. Right? The assumption is we have a solution. So when you get nonsense like 0 equals 1, it's telling you something. It's contradicting your assumption that you have a solution. Notice when we had infinitely many solutions, we didn't get a contradiction. We had 0 equals 0, which is always true. So 0 equals 1 means no solution. Okay, so these are all the cases. So in the next video, we're going to actually do the definitive form of the problem. Sort them out like you can work them out. Um, and you can really jump in then and start working out problems and, and work out problems out with me in the next one. Okay, so good luck with that.